Hello, in the next few minutes I'm going to cover my experience with my Cozy 6 heat pump. It was installed at the start of March, meaning we now can review 6 months worth of data for energy usage, efficiency and running costs since then. If you're thinking of buying a heat pump or just curious, stick around for the next few minutes. Let's kick things off with some headline figures. We're taking the time frame between March the 6th, when the Cozy 6 was installed, to September the 12th. And our total amount of usage, so electricity used in that time frame, is 619 kilowatt hours. And our heat output is 2.1 megawatt hours. This gives us a SCOP, which is a seasonal coefficient of performance, of 3.51. And the highest observed power usage we've ever seen from the Cozy 6 is around about 2.2 kilowatts. Our usage profile is as follows. We have a four bedroom house built in 2023, so insulated to the modern standards. There are four of us in total, typically using just over half of our 180 litre water cylinder each day. We heat the water to 50 degrees every day, and we heat the house to 20 degrees when applicable. Let's take a look at our usage then, starting with the month of March, where we used 257 kilowatt hours and our heat output was 873 and a half. This gave us a COP, so that's the coefficient of performance for that particular month of 3.39. Moving on to April, our usage had decreased quite a lot where it was uh, a fair bit warmer. Uh, so it was only 161 and the heat output from that was 581.92, meaning our coefficient of performance for that month was 3.61. For May, we massively decreased, so just under 80 kilowatt hours of usage, which gave us 275 and a half kilowatt hours of output with a average cup for the month of 3.48. And then June is a big decrease once again, purely hot water used in June, no heating whatsoever. So 42.66 uh, for usage and the output was 147.9, giving us a COP of 3.47. For July, it was even less once again, 34 kilowatt hours used roughly and a heat output of just over 121 kilowatt hours, giving us a COP of 3.56. For August, it was even lower usage once again at just under 32 kilowatt hours, giving us nearly 127 kilowatt hours of heat output. The COP for that particular month was massively better than any other month, despite the temperatures being fairly consistent with June and July. So the average there was 3.97, and it looked like it was going to end up just over 4, but uh, it cooled down ever so slightly towards the end of the month. And then September, we only have uh, 12 days worth of usage here, um, so you probably need to multiply it by maybe 2.5 or 3 to get a fair reflection versus the other months. Uh, but currently, so far, it's... 13 kilowatt hours of usage and uh, just over 48 and a half uh, for output giving us 3.74 as a cop let's look at the relative usage across the months so june july and august along with the limited data set we have for september is hot water only no heating required for the home in the summer months but uh, March, April and May all have heating to different degrees depending on the temperature. March was missing the first five days because it was newly installed and September is of course only 12 days worth of data. Let's take a closer look at efficiency and here is a graph showing the efficiency for the month of March for every single day. The highest was 3.85 on March the 30th and the lowest was 2.92 on March the 19th. Moving on to April, the average was slightly higher, but uh, the highest was 3.87 on April 19th and the lowest was 3.21 on April the 12th. For May, it was 3.79, which was the highest on May the 8th, and the lowest was 3.12 on the 12th of May. Moving on to June, the highest coefficient of performance was June the 30th, which was 4.02, and the lowest was 2.95 on June the 3rd, which was surprisingly low. For July, it was 
0.09, which was the highest on the 31st of July, and the lowest was 3.15. And then in August, things seem to improve massively. The highest was 4.57 on the 13th of August, and the lowest was 3.74 on the 23rd of August. So that was a really, really good month. And this seemed to continue to some extent in the cooler September, where the highest was 3.93 on September the 6th, and on September the 7th, that's the lowest we have so far of the data set of 12 days, it was 3.48, but still reasonably impressive given the temperatures. In our time frame of six months and six days, the most efficient day we have had is the 13th of August, which gave us 4.57. Conversely, our worst ever day for the entire time we've had the heat pump installed has been 2.92 on March 19th. And interestingly enough, that was a very, very cold morning. If you look at the graph there, it shows just under zero degrees. So I suspect that poor cop for that particular day may have been down to a defrost cycle. On the topic of outdoor temperatures, let's explore this further. Here we have a graph showing every day where only hot water has been used. I didn't mix and match hot water and heating data as the accepted rule of thumb tends to be hot water is less efficient than heating. Therefore, it's just qualifying data from June, July, August and September populating these graphs, being the summer months where no heating was used. There is a clear correlation between outdoor temperature and efficiency, meaning there can be an advantage to running the hot water cycles at warmer times of the day. Let's talk about running costs. I have a tariff called Octopus Go, and it's actually an electric vehicle tariff, but it works really well for me as I have plenty of home storage too, meaning I can keep my average unit rate only slightly above the off-peak rate of 8.5 pence. I do also have solar panels, but I've excluded these in all calculations to keep things simple. What we can see here is four full months at under £10, with June, July and August totalling under £10 themselves when added together, such as the low cost of only running hot water cycles. The grand total for all six months and six days worth of data is just under £55. But not everyone is fortunate enough to have home storage or even a smart meter, so let's look at what the running costs would be if constrained to the price cap as defined by Ofgem. I've taken into account all the unit rate adjustments which occurred within this time frame and applied it to my own usage. This works out to just over £161 as a grand total, which happens to be fairly comparable to what the equivalent would be with a gas boiler. Comparing the two though, it does highlight how much additional savings can be unlocked with the right smart tariff and the ability to make that average unit rate as low as possible. With that in mind, I have a referral link in the description for if you want to join Octopus Energy, who have a variety of smart tariffs to suit different usage profiles. I also have a code for £100 off a heat pump installation from Octopus Energy Services that applies to both their Cozy range and the Dakin models. So there you have it, six months and six days worth of data on my Cozy 6. I hope that's helpful. Consider subscribing for more heat pump, solar and renewable energy content. Check out this playlist on the right if you want to know more about my installation experience, the cost of install, or various bits and pieces I learned along the way. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.